السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خيرة خلقه وحبيبه أرسله ربه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله تعالى به الغمة وجاهد في الله تعالى حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأحبابه وأتباعه وكل من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته وقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين واحشرنا اللهم به واجمعنا معه كما آمنا به ولم نره يا رب العالمين أما بعد فإن الله عز وجل أمرنا بالتقوى قال سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور 
محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praises are for Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and I testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah O oh Allah shower your peace, blessings and mercy on the best of all humans on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in The respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Al-Amana, trust. Al-Amana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, inna aradna al-Amana ta'ala al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibali fa-abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan. Innahu kana zaluman jahula. The meaning of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have submitted al-Amana, this trust can be translated as trust, al-Amana, to al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibali. The heavens, skies, earth, and the Jibal, mountains. فَأَبَيْنَ All of them apologized. They refused. They said we'll not be able to take it. وَأَشْفَقُنَ مِنْهَا They were afraid to take it because it's such a huge uh, load and burden to take. وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ But the human being, the man, uh, took the amana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously is, taking in this, uh, is talking in this ayah about the amana, about the, the deen. The responsibility of religion, the responsibility of everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds us responsible for. The responsibility of being a human being, of being a rational person, a rational creature who is able to control other things. That is the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. All the way from tawheed, from ibadatullah, from recognizing that there is God and you have duties towards this God, including you know, your responsibilities and duties towards others and towards the environment and everything around you. Part of the amana is to, to know what we are here in the masjid for, to keep, you know, the masjid quiet from the cell phone and ringtones and so on. That is also an amana. Amana, if you are sitting here coming to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you shouldn't distract yourself and distract others by all of these uh, stuff. Amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amanat and amanat, trusts and trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has loaded us with, has given us. And based on how many, you know, there's a checklist in the day of judgment. If you pass most of the amanat or all of them, you go to Jannah. If you fail in some uh, or all of them, probably you will not be able to, uh, to, to uh, make it to Jannah. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الأمانة نزلت في جذر قلوب الرجال ثم علم من القرآن وثم علم من السنة الأمانة الله سبحانه وتعالى has put this trust in the core of hearts of people in the heart of every human being there is that trust that you know characteristic that he is holding himself responsible to something or in front of something and Muslims they hold themselves responsible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do everything because they think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. Does this thing please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or not? Other people, they might do other stuff for other things. But the, 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 common, the point that is common between all of them is that um, amana or trust or characteristic in the heart of everybody. Uh, Prophet Asalaam said in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this amana of accountability or trust in the heart, in the core of hearts of people, then they, they came to know about Qur'an and Sunnah, the, they got the instructions through Qur'an and Sunnah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said in the other hadith, khiyarum and nasu ma'adun khiyarum fil jahiliya, khiyarum fil islam. People are like, uh, we have different types of people, the best of them in jahiliya will be the, also the best in uh, Islam, idha faqhu, if they uh, understand and take it right. Al-amana iqamatu shara'i Allah Azza wa Jal. Amana, and this trust is to establish, to stand for the, the shara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deen, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way, the style of life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's amana. That is amana. In the same way you have a car, and it's your responsibility. You can drive it the, the right way, or you can drive it any other way. You can change the oil every 3,000 miles, or you can drive it for 10,000 miles, nothing will you know, happen uh, other than, you know, you are destroying your car. Even though some, you know, mechanics, they doubt this fact that 3,000 miles are not, you know, 
some people make it uh, make it up. I don't know. Anyhow, so it's your responsibility. It's your own responsibility. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not hold you accountable now. It's between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As salatu amana, for example, talking about deen, prayer is amana. How many of us? I'm talking about myself. How many of us, you know, are really, you know, praying fajr in time? Wallahi, some Muslims, some of us, maybe for years, they didn't pray fajr. They pray fajr when they wake up. And they wake up after sunrise. And they, they lost fajr. Fajr is from dawn. The end of it is until sunrise. How many of us pray salawat, especially fajr in jama'ah? Many Muslims, big number of Muslims, they wake up if you know if they have to wake up at four or three or or even earlier, they, they would do it because they have work, if they have work to do or something. But if you have prayer, which is commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you take it on yourself when you become Muslim or when you behave as Muslim. Because if you are Muslim and you don't pray fajr for years, then you you waste this amana, you lost this amana. Allah Zulla Qul inna Allah ya'murukum and to addu al-amanati ilahi Allah orders you to give amanat, every amana, every trust to their uh, Jews, to the people who and amanat al-deen illallah azza wa jal so if you do not stand for, for prayer for example as amana, as something that you have to check in time yes we can, we can miss one prayer or a few prayers as exception, as an exception, not as the rule but when this becomes the rule, the amana is gone. The trust of that person, the commitment between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gone. The exception becomes that he prays, that is an example. Pray is fajr in time. That becomes the exception. And instead of being the rule, the exception is that he tells the truth. Because all the time he is either joking or telling lies or cheating or something. Where is the amana? Where is the trust? Where is the trust? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Those when we establish them in earth. Allah is praising the true believers, the true ones who stood for him. When we establish them, when we give them the means, they establish prayers. They give zakah. Amaru bil ma'roof. They enjoy the good, forbid the evil. Yes, he's talking in the first place about nations, about, you know, we have many nations, the leader nation nowadays, America, you know, they are WikiLeaks. Go and check the WikiLeaks and you know what I'm talking about. This political hypocrisy, this political hypocrisy, they talk outside something, not only them, all the nations of the world including Muslim nations, including Muslim nations and Arab nations, who sold and betrayed, you know, their brothers, their Muslim brothers in Palestine by talking, you know, other than they, what they talk outside, they talk between them and other politicians in a different <coughs> way. Hypocrisy. So where is the amana when we talk about all of that? If Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes, you're not talking about nations and politicians and, and umam and, and all of that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you health, shabab, youth, you are young, money. All of us came to this earth, no money, no power. We were dependent on others. We didn't have any money. Allah give you the money, give me the money, give you the money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us power, Allah give us Islam. Allah give us the time, all the time. <coughs> So how are we using that? Are we checking on the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want, want us to check uh, the right way? Prayers, telling the truth, standing, helping others. Enjoy all of your money, but why don't you share a little bit of it with Muslims? Enjoy all of your skills and experiences, but how about your masjid and your ummah and your community? Why don't you share with others? Do you think you're, you will be really trustworthy if you Enjoy all of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and not even giving back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, you're not giving back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is in no need. You give to yourself. Do you think when you do not take care of, do not watch on your sight, on your hearing, in your heart, that you are truly trustworthy? Inna samaa wal basala wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anu Allah said indeed, 
Indeed, a sah hearing, one basar, sight, eyesight, one fu'al, and even heart. All of that, you'll be responsible for. You'll be accountable. You'll be asked, what did you do with that sama, that hearing that Allah gave you for all of your life, free of charge? Free of charge. Few minutes, if you have a plan and you want to, unless it's unlimited, phone plan or something, and you want to go over, you know, get a few more minutes to be able to hear others somewhere, you have to pay money for that. People pay hundreds of dollars to get some more data, whatever data plans or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all the hearing, you know, you are able to hear, you are able to see. You know, if you want to get a multimedia plan or something or video uh, calls, you'll be paying much more. Allah gives you the ability to, to see and hear and talk with others and understand others and all of that. How much did you pay? Nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to pay. but. Pay back to yourself, not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by using them the right way, not to destroy them. Look at these people out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them all of these now, and they go and they, uh, you know, do drugs. By doing drugs, you destroy the now of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not trustworthy. You are not trustworthy to keep this body, because this body is not yours. And the brain, the mind, all of these are amanat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely ask us about. <laughs> Salah, zakah. How many of us check on their, in their accounts how much money do I get? Or even bother to ask how, how much money, you know, that qualifies me to pay zakah and uh, if I have this for one year or not. Because this needs calculation. And everybody is his own personal uh, accountant. You are the accountant for yourself. Nobody else will, will count anything for you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also counting. And if you fail to check on that, it will be great. It's one of the pillars of Islam, zakah. Because you will be holding money that does not belong to you, it belongs to Muslims, even though you earn that money. If you are not giving zakah, if you're, not, if you're holding it for years, that is not your money. You are taking the money of Muslims. If you are not paying zakah. It can be not be, you know, necessarily because you don't want to pay it in the first place, but you don't bother much. Go back and check in your accounts and your property. What do you have? Ask your sheikh, ask anybody, and calculate it and pay it. It's amana. You never know when you're going to leave this life while you are holding this amana. Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders, you know, those who go and make hajj. Fala rafatha. Wala fusuqa wala jidala fil hajj. Not even argument. Not even the vain talk. The useless talk. When you are in, the, in that state of, you know, going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving, leaving everything behind. Is that the case that many Muslims do when they go to Hajj? It's a man. Had the little, little words. The Prophet ﷺ one day saw a lady. She was trying to lure a, a child to bring a child, you know, come and I give you this date, this, uh, you know, uh, dry date. Come. The, the, the child came to, to her and she gave him. He said, you know what? If you didn't, if you had not given it that date, it would have been counted a lie. You're talking to a child. They don't even recognize what you're saying. How many of us, they do that? If you do that, I give you this and that, if, and you don't give him anything. That is a trust because that child or that person, whatever, he or she trusts you. They put trust in you. Then you fail to meet that, to fulfill that trust. That is the point here. Regardless of the other person, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, man ghashya, not man ghashana. The riwayah of man ghashana is not as authentic as man ghashya, falaysa minna. Whoever cheats, in the other narration of the hadith, whoever cheats us does not belong to us. This us is not very authentic. The authentic narration is whoever cheats does not belong to us. Cheat Muslims, us, or cheat anybody. Because the principle is there. If you, <coughs> does, if you do not behave with that trust, it doesn't matter with who, Muslim or non-Muslim, with, even with animals. Al Imam al Bukhari he refused one day he was going to a sheikh, a scholar to get some hadith from him. He was, you know, having a lot of hadith. And this sheikh, he was trying to learn an animal, to bring a camel in the desert that, you know, was untied and he was trying to get it to him. Holding his lab, his clothes like that, as if he had some grain for him, some food for him. There was no food. So seeing that, Imam Bukhari said, thank you, I'm not gonna take anything from you. If you cheat like that, it's, uh, you can cheat in the hadith of the Prophet How many of us, 
hold them, themselves responsible for words, even thoughts, behaviors with ourselves, with others, with Muslims, with non-Muslims, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place, and regarding this as trust. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before he is a prophet, before he becomes a prophet, first day he got the revelation, and he was, you know, that angelic nature, when it, you know, it comes in communication with the human nature, it's, it's not easy. Jibreel alayhi salam, that angel, you know, just to look at him everywhere, look everywhere, Jibreel is there. So when he communicated with the Prophet ﷺ, talking to him directly like this, it was very tough experience to the Prophet ﷺ. So he came back trembling. Allah called him, O oh, one who wraps himself, O oh, one who covers himself. And then he, you know, Sayyidah Khadija, his wife, she uh, received the Prophet ﷺ, she said, Wallahi lan Allahu abadan. By Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Allah will never leave you alone. He was, she didn't even know that he is a prophet or not. And she gave, you know, the reasons for that. <inaudible> she mentioned some qualification, you help others. You help those who are in need. You help those who are in debt. You help everybody who is in need for help. He was, he was called an Amin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before he is a prophet. Trustworthy. He was called trustworthy. Am I trustworthy? Everybody should ask himself or herself that question. And am I taking my responsibility, my amana when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi every single person of you is right. And every single person of you is Mas'urun al Rayati is responsible for his Raiyat. Is like a ruler, is responsible for something, and everybody will be whole, will be held accountable for his or her responsibility. And he mentioned all the way from the ruler. The Hakim, the president, he is responsible for everybody under him. And he mentioned the man in his house, he is responsible for the entire family. And he talked about the wife, she is responsible for uh, the, the, the house. <laughs> we have big, big responsibilities and trusts to think of and to take seriously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the power to take our amanat, our responsibilities seriously. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين الآثمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله رب العالمين وأشهد أن سيدنا نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله الأمين. I don't want to take all the time, but this topic is really very wide and covers every aspect and every part of our life. When you study, do you think you are trustworthy? Do you think you are you are fulfilling? You know, you know your parents are probably paying you, or even the university are you know giving you a scholarship or something. Do you think you are taking it? the right way, you will be responsible for that. Because if you take that amount of money, obviously because based on your credentials, you deserve it. So you, they hold it from others who might be in need for that, and they give it to you. Whoever that person would be, is a, either your parents, either somebody who donated that, either the, even the government, you should never cheat. You should take it the right way. When you have like children, and then this is a big question here. Do you think you are really trustworthy? You are, you are really taking the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you? Wallahi <laughs> All believers, protect yourself, your families. Again, a self fire. Do you think you take the responsibility? When you bring them all of these channels and TV and even computers, everybody now got his or her laptop. And it's not a matter of taking authority over anybody, but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make some children even you know they are at the whatever i don't want to, to talk about ages but you know they are not fully mature you are you become fully mature you pass through all of that experience and you think you leave them like that in these oceans of everything that they can find online on youtube on on the uh, the tv and everywhere without even guidance and you think it's, uh, it's okay they are kids you give them their freedom freedom what if you if you throw somebody in the middle of the ocean and you, you, you expect them to learn how to swim and to survive, that's, does, that does not, does not make any sense. You guide them. You should guide them. You are responsible for that. On the day of judgment, everybody will be res responsible for himself. Yes, that is correct. You get your, your record and you go over everything, prayer, say that everything is perfect. You got, you know, 100%. Everything is, is, is perfect. Do you think it's that will 
qualify you to go straight to Jannah? Okay, take him to Jannah? No. Do you have any other responsibilities? Were you responsible for others? Yes. He was married. Bring his wife. You will not be removed until your wife is okay completely. Talking about the parts of responsibility or things that you are responsible for, uh, you know, when it comes to, to, to her. Children, you will not be able to go nowhere until everybody that was under your responsibility passes. So think about that day. We need to think about that uh, that day. Plagiarism, and talking about you know acad uh, academics and so on. Many people they quote others, and they don't pay much attention to uh, you know refer to the book, the source, to have enough documentation for where they got this information, as if they compiled or they invented or they brought this information. You know, it's their own production. That is wrong. That is that person is not trustworthy. Look at, you know, our Imams, our scholars, our true scholars, and Muzani. This was one of the companions of Imam al-Shafi'i And he was starting, he was compiling a, a book. And he said at the beginning of the book, Fiqh, Kitab al-Tahara, purification. One thing, you know, the first thing in, in uh, books of Fiqh, you find purification. He said, Qal al-Imam al-Shafi'i, Imam al-Shafi'i, his, his shaykh, says, Qal Allah Ta'ala, Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً طَهُورًا And we have, Allah said, we have brought down from the sky pure water. He said that the, 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 the author of the book, Al-Muzani, said, قَالَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّفْعِي قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالِ Imam al-Shafi'i said that Allah, why did he do that? حَتَّى الْإِمَامُ السِّيُطِي or other scholars, he said, it, it would have been enough for him to say, because everybody reads this in the Mus'haf, in the Qur'an. You quote a verse from the Quran, bring it from the Quran. He said, no, because he followed the same way that Imam al-Shafi'i, when he started his books of fiqh, he was the first one to use that verse, to quote that verse at the beginning of that chapter of purification. See how honest was this uh, scholar? And Imam al-Hakim, Abu Abdullah al-Hakim, he has a collection of hadith. And, you know, there was another scholar who, uh, after him, who had some, you know, he got the mistakes of that book of Abdullah al-Hakim <clears throat> and compiled them and said, no, that was wrong, that was wrong. When that person of Abdullah al-Hakim was teaching his book, he was teaching it along with the mistakes with the other book of the other person, the other scholar, that uh, he got from his own book. That was not it. He sent him even, you know, uh, a letter to thank him. Jazakallah khairan for showing, you know, these mistakes and, and uh, I need to cl uh, clarify it for myself and for others. These were trustworthy people. Trustworthy people. We need to behave like this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you in the responsibility of being a father or mother, you are definitely responsible for your kids. Money is not number one. It's very important, but it's not everything that you have to care for. There are a lot of many things more important than money to care for. If you are uh, a child, if you are young, if you are youth, Wallahi, you will be very much responsible for that because a lot of people, maybe even youth, they don't have access to everything that you have access to. Probably they, they, they don't have the same powers, the same, you know, intelligence, the, the same, you know, parents like you are supporting you and so on. You will definitely be responsible for that. You will be responsible for your parents uh, if you are, you know, giving them the rights or you are not giving them the rights. And Allah mentioned the rights of parents right after his rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and be good, be beautiful to your, uh, to your parents. All of these are amanat. We need to think of the ikhwan, our responsibility towards our, towards our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in prayers, the five pillars of Islam will come, number one. And we check on, in our heart what you know, uh, these pillars are giving us, are, are they reflecting our actions or not? We need to be trustworthy and make that assessment. And then our um, uh, uh, yani, uh, behaviors and our dealings with others, we need to check on that before the day will come that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold every single person responsible for all of these amanat. That is the time now to check on them. I say this, I pray for Allah the Most Gracious to forgive us for our sins, O Lord of the Universe. Allah forgive all of our sins, O Lord of the Universe. Allah forgive all of our sins, O Lord of the Universe. Allah forgive all of our sins, O Lord of the Universe. Allah forgive all of our sins, O Lord of the Universe. 
Well, Allah bring the hearts of the believers together, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Well, Allah bring our hearts together, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma hayi ila hadhi al-ummati amra rushdin yu'azzu fihi ahlu al-ta'at wa yutabu fihi ala ahli al-ma'asiyah wa yumaru fihi bil-ma'rufu anha fihi ala al-munkar, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah show us the truth as truth and, and make us follow it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah show us the falsehood as falsehood and make us avoid it and get away from it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <coughs> oh Allah make us avoid all the ways of fitan, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah make us avoid all the ways and paths of fitan, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And show us the Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path, and make us follow it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah make us avoid all the ways and paths of fitan, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And show us the Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path, and make us follow it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah make us avoid all the ways and paths of fitan, Ya Rabbil Alameen.